Doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask. Doesn't mean that God doesn't bless. Say amen. We believe in God's blessings. I want God's blessings. I pray and ask God for His blessings. But that's not the essence of my love. The essence of my love for God is just that. For God. Now we read here this story where I believe Jesus Christ makes clear. Because I think if we were to boil down two elects, two people in the, in the New Testament that were the only two of what we could perceive as being elected by God. Now there were more, but for sake of, of discussion, let's talk about these two. One of them is Paul. God, Paul was an elect of God to take the, the gospel and take it to the Gentiles because the Jews refused to receive it. The next elect, neither worse nor better, but equal in the same, was Peter. Peter. Now, let's read this story. And let's look at what I'm talking about here this morning concerning the nature of God. Now, this is after the resurrection. The Lord had appeared unto them many times for about 40 days. And now there was a period of time where, where Christ was not around. The disciples and all of them were left alone to try to figure things out. And so Peter said to his buddies, James and John, some other disciples, I'm going to go fishing. I don't know what else to do. I'm going to go fishing. Now you see, folks, that goes back to where Peter didn't know the will of God. He didn't. God, Jesus Christ didn't say to him, now on the fourth day do this, the seventh day do this, the tenth day do this. It wasn't until he finally left where he said specifically to them, go into the upper room and wait. That was a clear signal of God's will. But prior to that, he did it. So Peter basically said in his heart, I know no other thing else to do while we amidst ourselves in this great confusion, but to go back to work. Go back, we're going to go fishing. Peter, James, or James and John said, we're going to go with you. So there's the story. We pick it up at verse 9. Jesus now came along, asked them, have you caught any fish? They said, nope. He said, throw your net on the other side. The net became so full of fishes, they could barely drag it into the boat. We pick it up, verse 9. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid there on and bread. In other words, Christ had prepared a fire. He had prepared some fishes and bread. And he now was going to bring them and they were going to eat together. Verse 10. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Why would the Lord say to the disciples, Bring all the fish that ye have now caught. You see, these fish... We could surmise that this catch was the greatest catch that Peter had ever caught. And now the Lord is saying to them, I want you to bring it. Bring it up on the shore. And not only that, but I'm going to have you count it. You see, folks, Christ was saying to Peter, see this blessing? It was all that Peter could ever imagine. Preachers preach all the time that Scripture says that God promises that He wants to give us all that we could ever want to imagine. And that's exactly what Christ was doing with Peter because He had blessed Peter with the most that He has ever produced in His occupation. He's now going to become not necessarily wealthy but have a lot more money and prosperous. And this is awesome. The most ever. Verse 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, one hundred and fifty-three. Folks, it is so significant of what I'm talking about here that John was led by the Holy Spirit to give exact count of how many fish. God just blessed us with ten million dollars in the raise of the worth of our company. Get million. Let's reinvest and keep on praying. And pray that next year it's 20 million. You see? You see? And that's okay. That's okay. But that's not where we're going this morning. 
when we're talking about the nature of the faith of God's elect. And the fish were so great that it was 153. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. In other words, not only was it a blessing of multitude, but the net didn't even break, which in itself was a miracle. When Christ first met Peter, James, and John on the shores of Galilee, what were they doing? They were mending their nets. And now Jesus is saying specifically to Peter, Peter, this is the greatest catch that you could ever imagine that you've ever had in your life. And not only that, but your net's not broken. That's how much I can prosper you. Yeah. That's how much I want to prosper you. Count it and see it, Peter, for it is great unto thy being. Verse 12. Jesus said unto them, Now come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Well, duh. Verse 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. You see, folks, not only that now, but God was the cook. And so when they ate of the fish, <laughs> that was the best tasting fish ever in their lives. The bread was fresh out of the oven. The smell was driving people crazy for miles. The butter was just turned. And I'll tell you what, when they sunk teeth into that fish and sunk teeth into that bread, it blew their imagination and their whole palates just exploded with flavor. This is awesome. This is the best ever. It's never been like this. And it can be like this now all the time. Or not. Verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Now before we get to verse 15, folks, do you understand the setting? Do you understand the setting? Peter's bank account has never been so wealthy. The taste of the fish that he has caught has never been so good. The nets were broken, and there's more and more and more to come. The fulfillment of his career, the fulfillment of his job. He is now known as the master fisherman. Peter, James, and John. They can catch more than anybody else can catch. It is spectacular. There are few words that can describe how great this setting is. But with that, God wants to know, do you love me more than you love this? He asks Peter in verse 15. So when they had dined, Peter saith, or Jesus saith unto Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? You have a bank account now worth 10 million. Your nets are unbroken. You've never caught fish like this before. Your company is absolutely flourishing. Your church is absolutely exploding in growth. Everything that you do turns to gold. Everything that you touch turns to gold. Not only do people worship God, but they worship you, Pastor. They worship you. And they worship the worship. And they worship the worshipers. And they even worship themselves. It could not be any better. God's presence, explosive blessings. How awesome is this? And Jesus would look down and say to them, Lovest thou me more than all this? You see, folks, what Christ was saying to Peter was this. Peter, if you're going to become my elect, you must come and be willing to be expendable. You must be willing to be expendable. The rich young ruler came to the Lord and said, Wow, 
Dude, now what can I add to my life to have eternal life? The Lord said, you've been pretty wealthy. You've been doing pretty good for yourself in life. Absolutely. Now, if you just tell me how to get saved, I'll have all of it. The Lord said, that's great. Sell everything you got, give it to the poor, give it to the church, and follow me. The young rich ruler said, wait a minute now. If I need to be expendable in this behavior, I'm not. No, wait a minute. I didn't. I, that's not what I'm. See, I'm not sure I want that much skin in the game. The Lord said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Then feed my lambs. See, what that means is this, folks. Can you give them up to love me more? Can you give up these to love me more? Can you become expendable from these things to love me more? You see, folks, that's the faith of God's elect. Amen. And I believe that's the faith when God returns to the earth that's the faith that Christ is looking for. In the book of Luke, we have a parable. Luke chapter 18, 1 through 8. Don't, don't look to it. Don't read it right now. But the widow came, continually came to the judge and badgered the judge because she owed and she wanted relief from the judge. The judge set her free of her debt. The judge would not. She continued to came, continued to came. And after a while, the judge said within himself, even though he had no regard for God, he said, this woman continuously pastors me. So for me to, for her to stop pastoring me, I just can't get rid of her. I'm going to avenge her of her death. And then the Lord said, would not God even so speedily avenge even his own elect? And then he said, and when I come back to earth, will I find faith? In other words, will I find people? Will I find the church? That loves me more for me than loves me more for what I can do for them. Well, are they willing to be expendable to the extent that they will love me as much as I love them? You see, folks, that's the faith of God's elect. Let's read on. Verse 16. He said to him, to Peter again. Now understand, folks, he's talking to Peter. James and John is sitting nearby, but he is talking to Peter. This is a direct influence on the heart and the soul of Peter. James and John will just get what's left over. But it is God that is challenging Peter. Folks, I speak to us here this morning. I believe God is challenging the church today. God's challenging me. I hope he's challenging you. Because when we meet that challenge, then we will catch an abundance of fish. Yeah. Then we will have an yes. abundance of overflowing of joy and peace and serenity, knowing that we know God. Can you say amen? Yeah. And he said the second time, Simon Jonah, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love you. Then he said, Then feed my sheep. And then in verse 17. He said to him the third time, son, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. He said, dude, how many times are you going to ask me this? Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all these things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said to them, then feed my ship. And in verse 18, verily I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest with us over there that would go. You did, and you just did marvelous things, and you are now a great fisherman, and you can catch as much fish as you want. Your bank account's going to be full. But when thou shalt be old, everything's going to change, Peter. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee up and carry thee, because you're going to be unable to walk. You have no idea where to go. Verse 19, this spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. And then he said unto him, Follow me. He didn't say unto the three, Okay, you guys. Get up now and follow me. He looked into the eyes of Peter and he said, Peter, now follow me. I close with this, folks. What's God saying today? Not what God has said, but what's God saying? What's God saying to you today? What's God saying to me today? Let me tell you what God is saying to me today. He's saying to Daryl Stavros, I want your faith to be the faith of my chosen elect. 
Now, discover the characters and, and the nature of that faith. And once you've discovered it and you've implanted it and you've lived it, then preach it that others might know that when I come back, will I find like faith even on the earth. For that shall be my bride, without spot and without wrinkle. That shall be my bride, who's wrapped in white cloths of linen of white and snow. When I return, I will take them and bring them even unto myself. God said, the Lord said unto Peter, get up and follow me. What is the Lord saying to you this morning? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time we've had together. I thank you, Lord, that not only did you speak in times past, but you are speaking today. I pray, Lord, that our ears be open and our hearts be attentive and to the nature of God and His chosen elect. Bless this congregation, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Bless them in health. Bless them in body. Bless them in finances. Bless them in spirit. Bless them in relationship. And more, Lord, most of all, may we love you more than these. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand.